going to talk tonight a little bit about uh, why you would want to get feedback. Uh, in, it improves your product. It allows you to be consistent. Uh, alignment with others get you out of a vacuum. You can be collaborative and uh, allows you to build trust with your team. Uh, we're going to go specifically through uh, a design crit. There are other types of feedback. Design crits aren't meant to replace uh, any number of these, and there are a lot of other ones, but a design crit is just one way to get um, very rapid. I'll get to that slide here. Uh, it allows you to get uh, rapid feedback and see patterns that you might not have seen before. And uh, it's a positive safe space. It allows you to be rapid, reveals um, patterns that you might not have seen, and uh, like I said, builds trust with your team. And you want to be kind to others and not allow uh, the influences of social media or these guys uh, impact that. And I'll skip past this video here. And I'll pass it over to Leah and let her talk a little bit about what it means to do one of these crits. And then we'll try to do one. Again, if, um, if you'd like to participate, uh, we are going to share a link in the chat uh, that will allow you to uh, be able to uh, participate. Yeah, so what we're gonna show here, um, these slides are usually what um, I'll share with uh, um, people who are newer to the crit. Uh, it's usually POs and engineers. Um, so we'll go over an agenda first and um, we won't stick to this particular time frame. but what's important here is who is actually participating. Um, we have a presenter who will go over the project summary. Um, that's usually the designer, a facilitator who starts the timer and music. Um, all other participants, uh, which is going to be you all or whoever is going to be jumping into Mira here in a second. Um, you guys will be leaving comments and then at the end of the time, that's when we'll all review those comments together. So the next couple of things are just kind of recapping some of the stuff that uh, Wes touched on. So the goal here is design crits give us a chance to share work early and involve others in the process. The goal is to create a safe space for honest and efficient feedback. And you've got some examples here too of uh, some of our Miro boards at Advent Health. Um, feedback, oh no, uh, good feedback drives iteration. It helps the designer generate new ideas and find opportunities for improvement. Um, so as you're adding comments, try to phrase your comments using the examples here. Do you think, I wonder if, I like how, what does, did you try, what if, I wish, and how does. And these things will also be in the Miro board, so it'll be there for you to reference. So the rules are pretty simple. Um, being prepared, be on time, and be specific. So if you see a detail that you like, let the designer know why it works. Um, and if something isn't working, just remember to avoid solutions and personal bias. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen. I can't share while you're sharing. <laughs> And I did uh, share the link um, that uh, Leah is presenting right now. So if anyone wants to jump in and observe, but you can keep watching the Zoom until it's time to actually participate. Yeah, for people who aren't on the Miro board, can you see me floating around here? Yep. Okay, perfect. That's good. Um, so what we're going to go over first, this is actually just an example. Um, so you can get a feel for what's going to happen in the actual crit that we do. Um, so this is the template that uh, um, I, I use during a crit at Admin House. Um, and so we used it for Planta here. Um, so what I'm sharing is, and this is a little recap of you know, what the app is. Are your plants dying? Learn how to keep them alive with Planta. Get all the help you need to get impressive thriving plants. This is the home screen app 
um, or this is the home screen of the Planet app. Ooh. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> um, so then the feedback that we're going to look for, um, there's always going to be a section for feedback here. Is it clear what you can do from the home screen? Um, and what do you think about the hierarchy? So I'll just zoom in here. Um, and so after people have left their comments and we go through that little review that I talked about earlier, um, we'll go by one by one. So then um, Wes left this comment so he would read this out loud. Did you try adding branding? I like that the actions are right up front for the user. I wonder if this um, is one task. I wonder if this one task is for all three plans shown. I wonder if these plans are custom to the user's profile. Did you try labeling each of these plants shown? How does it know what I need to do? Um, and so what's interesting is, you know, as a designer, after, you know, everything's said and done, sometimes you'll start to see little clusters of these comments, and those are usually the areas that are going to need the most attention. Um, I'll just go through the rest here. What if the user doesn't have plants yet? Did you try adding a CTA button for premium? I wonder how they choose to upgrade. Oops. Um, so uh, if, you've, if you're paying attention, um, you'll notice that all of these are using that phrasing that was um, mentioned on the previous screen. Um, and the project summary template that we have here, it's gonna have those things listed here for you to reference to. So, am I forgetting anything, Wes? No, I think awesome. we're ready for August lock. All right. So August lock, um, we've added a new feature called door sense to allow users to know when their door is open, closed, or locked. This will also allow users to set their door to unlock or to auto lock. In order for this to work, the user must be able to calibrate their lock. So the feedback the designer is looking for is, did you understand the instructions? Are the calls to action clear? Will the user know where to go to calibrate? Will users understand why they need to calibrate? Will users know how to set auto lock? Are their mobile patterns familiar enough to users? And yeah, so these here are the screens that um, I'll, let me set this timer. Oh no. Wes, are you able to set a timer on your end? It won't let me. Oh, it's only free for 14 days. Uh, <laughs> We're in a free board here, but that's okay. We can set a timer. Okay. All right, so what, you want to I'll, yeah, I'll play some music. Hopefully it's not too loud. Let me steal it from my husband real quick. I can, I can set a timer too on my phone. Okay. All right, so um, does anyone have any questions? I kind of went through that pretty quick. Probably for those people that are new to Miro, the, uh, the feature that Leah was showing was the comment feature. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that there is a uh, little comment bubble. Uh, you should have the ability to comment and um, you can add, add comments uh, throughout the board. Um, again, probably the, one of the things to remember is the, uh, the tips that are at the bottom right of the request board, you know, being not solutioning and you know do you think i wonder i like how um, what does did you try uh, what if i wish and how does so trying to frame them that way you don't have to use those specific phrases but try to avoid solutioning or saying i would do it this way or you should do that you know, that kind of thing. all right so i'm going to start a 10 minute timer now 
and I will play some music starting now. I'm having trouble a being able to have actual actual audio time. I'm sorry. And if you need to move the board, you hold the space bar down. So but how do you add a comment? You can press C and that should trigger the ability to comment. Um, you should have this menu here.
I'm liking the music choices. Since nobody can see the clock, just so you know, there's about three minutes left. That is our time. Let me get out of here. Cool.
We have got a lot of comments, which is really awesome. Let's... All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go screen by screen. Let's start out with that. Um, and then once your comments pulled up, um, we'll give you the chance to read it out loud. Um, and uh, it'll also give you the opportunity if you weren't sure you know, how, how to word it, you can elaborate. So first and one. One other thing um, that you'll find, uh, the reason that we're going through and re reading these out is a lot of times a uh, design team might be working on similar features throughout a distributed product. And you start to hear people talking about ideas that can give you insights that maybe you haven't seen before. Um, a lot of times also, we did this for 10 minutes because there were so many screens and a lot of us haven't done this before, but we've done them so short as three minutes. So you can do them really rapid too. Um, so, and since that one's mine, I'll read that one out loud. Uh, I like that the brand came up. All right, Avery. Oh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I was asking at this stage in the app um, what this screen, uh, what the section exactly represents. Um, is it a single household? Does it represent like, like a, yeah, basically a, a household? And um, that next was sort of a follow-up to that. And I wonder what the state would look like with multiple items and also what an empty state would look like. Nice. Awesome. Rick. Yeah, hi. So I, my, my question was just simply, what does this particular page do? Because it, it shows a blank and there isn't really any instruction on it. So. I was I was curious what 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 purpose it served. Matthew. Um, yeah. So I asked, what is this space meant to convey? Because I was also confused uh, about what the purpose of this page was for. Cool. And a lot of times, what will happen when you're doing a crit like this, you'll see that start to emerge. And if you're one of the critters uh, going through and do this you can say, oh, plus one on that. And then uh, when it comes around here, you go, oh, that's a plus one. Um, but you'll see that happen sometimes where I'll, um, many people will start commenting on the same things and, or you can elaborate too, but that way you guys know what you can do. Hi, um, yeah. I wonder if there's a better way to onboard a new person where, how do I start? So this part, I, if you're a new user, then I wasn't sure where I would go in this case or how to do it. Nice. Joyce. You might be muted, Joyce. I'll just read that one out. Um, okay, I thought I heard some rummaging around. <laughs> I wonder if you leave this page blank on purpose. What does it do? All right. Oh, this is me. Um, did you try showing multiple doors on the home screen? So yeah, here I said, um, have you thought about adding iconography to communicate the door status? Um, right now, it's just a blank red dot and. I don't really know what that means. I mean, I guess it implies that it's locked, but to me that can also imply that it's unlocked or, you know, I'm not really sure what that means. So I think maybe I could actually picture of a, like an unlocked lock or a locked lock would give me more, maybe with also some words saying locked or unlocked, give me more of a clue. And Trey, a good example there would be, did you try using images instead of a circle? Okay. Yeah, for this comment, I put, I wonder how the user will... Images, oh, sorry. It's okay. It's fine. Go ahead, Trey. No, I was just saying, I was visualizing images within the circle. That's all I was saying. Yes. That's great. Yeah, plus one on that. Go ahead, Steven. All right. So um, I, I said, I wonder how the user will understand or distinguish the change of information from this screen to the next screen. It looks like almost everything is the same except for the 
except for the text right under the circle. So I wonder how the user will interpret these information or even be able to detect that an information has changed. All right, I wonder if I can tap here as well as swipe over. I wonder what discovered means. Avery. Uh, yeah, um, what does, uh, I was curious what this, this indicator stand for and what would be the alternate, alternative screen? So if you swiped, um, what that, what, what that second screen look like or behave like? Rick. Yeah, uh, I wish I knew what this button did. Um, usually in, in apps, I'm used to seeing some sort of indicator since you, there's really no hover state on buttons. And I see that it's a list icon, but um, it's, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be a list of, so. You're up again. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, I was curious what the difference between the navigation icon on the right and the navigation icon on the left are, uh, what the differences are between them. Uh, I've seen them used interchangeably in some apps uh, as well as some web apps. And so I was interested in what the difference was between the two of them. I believe this is me and I have a very similar comment. Um, I wonder if having two different menus will be confusing. Matthew. What if the button color or border change between discovered and closed states? Because uh, otherwise it looks the same to me. <laughs> James? Uh, yeah, that was my uh, plus one um, about the iconography. Um, maybe something block-like to represent it. Jason? Uh, mine's sort of a plus one as well to, uh, to trace as well. What if you tried using a symbol along with the text in red color to indicate that the door is locked? Joyce? Um, sorry about before. I was not able to find the unmute button. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, for this one, I wonder if this is still the onboarding pages, or this means like the door is closed and locked. Trey? Oh, yes. Um, again, this is an iconography thing, too. Again, this is, to me, I don't really know what a dot means, if I was like a new user to this. Jason? I just said, I wonder if how long this loading state will take it might change how we approach the design on that screen. Jeff. Hey, um, I like how visual these settings are. Emma? Uh, yeah, so I was, I liked how it was iconic, like the way they laid out the product. Matthew. Did you try adding a hint of color to the bottom menu? Wes. I wonder if I can auto lock without calibrating. I see you. Oh, did you try disabling before this is calibrated? Was this before? See you again. I wonder what happens if I haven't calibrated my lock. Rick. Oh, you're muted. Thanks, sorry. Uh, I liked how you're using a, a different icon to indicate that that's taking you outside the app. All right, Steven. 
I wonder how the user could be guided with how the check is going or how much longer it will take. So basically to just kind of guide the user of how's the process coming and what I should expect soon. We got another one here. Stephen? Yeah. Um, let's see. Can you click that one? Because I, I don't see the... Uh, okay, I see now. Uh, I wonder why the loading indicator is missing. It seemed like I saw yeah. like a loading thing on different screens except this one. So I was just wondering why this one didn't have one. Interesting. You're up again. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This for this one, I put. I wonder how the user will know where to calibrate. So it tells me that it's not calibrated. I wonder how I could find that out. Um, okay. Yeah. I guess this is sort of a plus one half of. Um, should the user already know how to calibrate um, the locker? Will there be instructions? Matt. Hey, that's me. Uh, how does the user begin calibrating from here? Just uh, kind of taking action. What if I don't calibrate now? Can I do it later? How do I do it later? And I was just curious about the hierarchy about um, why the calibrate now option was second and not first, because it seems like I, I kind of get the sense that 95% of the people will um, will want to do that. So I just wonder why that's not the top option. Um, yeah, I was wondering uh, if we could um, try using video or GIFs here instead of um, just still images. That way it kind of fully demonstrates how to take each action. I like the visuals here. I wonder if the series of step, step screens could be condensed. Rick. Uh, what if there were more line spacing? I wonder, how long, I wonder how long this takes. Emma. Um, I also wonder how long it takes. Did you try showing how many steps this will be? I wonder, I wonder if the copy can be concise instead of using, so for example, instead of using a jar and needing to explain it, seems like well, it's trying to do the same thing. I wonder if that could be kind of concise. James. Yes. Uh, what if the text you used was a little bit larger? Um, you know, someone older may have a hard time uh, seeing it. Uh, the line spacing also a plus one on that. I wish I. Yeah. So I'm just curious. Sort of, what if someone is visually impaired? Uh, what if a visually impaired user is trying to set this up, um, like how, the, how, some, how they might um, take these instructions and act on it? I'm just wondering if a back button will be helpful. Maybe I don't know if someone may have accidentally skipped and clicked next, double clicked next accidentally, or just wants to go back and make sure they did a step correctly. I wonder how this copy could feel more conversational. Matt. This is sort of between this and the next step, uh, but I wish there was a loading or indeterminate progress indicator here. Matt, can you Are these two views duplicates? Matt. What if they opt out? Uh, oh, what if the opt out came sooner in the journey? Um, it seems weird to choose not to use it as soon as I finish installing it. 
Stephen. I wonder what users will see when they don't use door sets. Yes. I like that I won't accidentally click close um, button down below. I know I didn't leave that exact. <laughs> Steven. I wonder if this confirmation message could be distinguishable between the other instructional text. Did you try really celebrating this finished process? Yes. Uh, did you try adding visual annotation to the image? Uh, a little bit of a plus one to that first comment around this. Uh, just to make it seem uh, a little bit more, you know, instead of using the static images, um, some that really kind of uh, show the visuals of the process itself. James. Uh, yes, what if a directional graphic was added? I, I think this is kind of along the same lines. I, I thought maybe just a, like a circle arrow showing direction might be, uh, a good way to help tell a story. Mm -hmm. Seeing patterns. All right, James again. Uh, yes, yeah, so that image and the one before it um, are pretty similar. And, uh, and then between that one and the, the next slide, um, it seems like this it, the same image so maybe on the previous it's slightly ajar and then it's closed again like you know the visuals kind of matching the story oh, same Jason. feedback what if we use short video or snippets or some sort of steps instead of stills for each step Matt. Uh, what if user closes this calibration flow during the process? I wonder if this sentence can be more clear. I wonder what it looks like in the app when it's detected. I have a check. Um, I wonder if we need to provide the disable option here or in a separate place, considering they just set it up and it's unlikely, at least that's my assumption, that they would disable it right away. Yeah. I wonder what happens when I tap this. Uh, will the action take place or do I get a modal to confirm? Hmm. Yeah. This is uh, sort of a plus one to what Abhishek said. Uh, what if the disable action wasn't in the same place as the next continue? Um, at the same of that, uh, at the end of that flow. What are yes. we Rick. Uh, I wonder why this screen comes before the auto lock enabled state slash preference screen. Uh, I like that the feedback is clearly stating what to expect up at the top there. Trey. Um, could we tinker with the font weight or the color here to communicate a warning or urgency? I think that because your door will not lock automatically, I think that's a state that most users would not want. So something to call that out a little more strongly. Did you try different phrasing? Uh, I wish this language didn't in indicate state, uh, specifically referring to the word enabled. That's my plus one on that one, Matt. Um, for this one, I said, what if this copy included the settings in it? Uh, so for example, instead of saying the duration specified below said once it's been closed for two minutes. Have a check. 
Um, how does this work if the option is different from on a timer? Um, or I'm not sure if that's the only option here. I wonder if this is the default time. Have you tried a select box uh, slash rotator to be more visually precise? Hmm. I wonder how easy it will be to set a specific number. I'm nervous it will keep jumping over what I want. I wonder if this is the only place to access smart alerts. I wonder what smart alerts, alerts are. Cool. I mean, I see a couple of extras up there that maybe were added last minute, but that's, that's crit. Um, I know next steps for me at least, um, what I do uh, is, you know, I'll take time after the crit to think about, you know, are there questions on here? Let's say like I didn't invite um, a developer. Are there maybe technical constraints I need to think about? Um, so like what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll group all of the patterns that I'm seeing throughout here um, and just sort of compile like a list in my own, um, like I'll do it in my design file as I'm working so I can pay attention to these things during the next iteration of it. Um, something to think about too, uh, and this was something that Wes touched on earlier. I, I noticed a lot of people um, commenting around how things were phrased. Um, and I think that's a really good opportunity when you start to see those things bubble up, like thinking about, okay, well, um, across the team, like, are we using the same consistent, you know, brand language, things like that. Um, yeah. So. Wes, do you have any other thoughts? Yeah. Um, uh I'm wondering how many people, did anyone find it difficult to not try to solution? <laughs> uh, you know, there were, I think there were a couple that maybe we could think about that were like trying to solution it, but we're still dancing on that edge, which is, which is cool. Um, everybody was really uh, polite and thoughtful about, about what they had. And, um, you know, one of the things that I'm not sure if you all were paying attention to as we were all reading them out, sometimes someone would say something like, um, maybe it would try this type of select did you try this think of trying this type of selector and then people said ah and like i think abhishek said something about what about the visually impaired how challenging will it be for them and people you could hear audible responses and that happens a lot in the crit where you hear other people go oh yeah like i didn't think about that and that's where this was kind of a big board right? But we wanted to start seeing those patterns start to happen for you all. And, um, but you do see that start, that behavior start to happen with the people that are doing the critique. You start to hear people go, oh, wow, I didn't think about that. I didn't see it that way. And um, we all have different experiences. It might even be, you know, looking at something from a different way. And I, I thought that was something that um, jumped out at me. And, um, was really, really cool to, uh, I always find it cool to experience. But great work, everybody. It was amazing. I really like this. We're all ready to start working for August Loft now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's take it to them. <laughs> I, I did want to jump in and see if maybe folks who hadn't experienced something like this before or hadn't used um, sort of feedback language uh, like what was kind of in that prompt, uh, the what if, I like, I wish, th those sorts of phrasings. Um, what folks thought about that? Or maybe if anybody had any other questions about this experience? Look, yeah, uh, I, I like the experience. Um, so I, I, if anything, I wish that my, my art instructors had introduced that type of language back cool. <laughs> when I was studying and we were doing crits, right? Like, yeah. It would have been, it would, I think it would have been far better received because, yeah. you know, the, the type of language that, that you've all outlined that I guess is, is your standard for, for Advent Health is, is very non-confrontational. It's very 
it's intended to be thought provoking um, and, and allows people to provide a way of, of hopefully giving suggestions, like I said, it, it, using very non-confrontational non language because as soon as somebody is, perceives a comment as confrontational, then they're going to shut down and be less receptive to, to reading or hearing the feedback. And it also makes it less personal. I would also like to add on to Rick um, that um, that it, it's not only it not only makes it non-confrontational, it like makes the person who's critiquing um, passively remember that it's supposed to be positive. That like just trying to keep the framing in mind makes you go, oh yeah, I need to learn how to say this in a constructive way, in a positive way. So yeah, that that was a very good experience. I like the way that um, it makes everybody's voice heard um, without somebody taking over the conversation. Sometimes I feel like in, when we're just talking, like there's always that person who takes over the conversation and no one and other people have not really had a chance to offer their feedback. So this is kind of giving them this kind of like an equal opportunity feedback here. Yeah, as the loud voice, uh, I, I have a very loud voice and I will always be happy to share my opinion. I really enjoy using frameworks like this because I want that cross-functional perspective, especially if I'm able to get other folks into the room for something like this that aren't necessarily even designers. Like I think this can make that feedback process available to your entire cross-functional team, whether it's uh, other designers, devs, product managers, uh, stakeholders, whoever, um, and uh, it, it also makes sure that the people who aren't necessarily as vocal in meetings like that, especially, you know, like large meetings, um, have just as much opportunity to give that feedback. Um, so I, I always really enjoy that about this aspect of, of giving feedback in this way. Yeah, to piggyback off of um, what Matt was saying, um, I work on, a, I actually technically work as a web content coordinator. I work for Polity Homes. Um, and um, I work on our marketing team. So I'm working with creative content people. I'm working with IT teams. I'm working with um, media teams. So just, just, I'm working more with marketers so much more than um, designers. But I do also work with developers and project manager so I'm thinking having all those cross-functional voices actually is helpful too so yeah I think this would be a great tool for me to tell my boss about and say hey maybe as I'm designing comps for you know this redesign of this module maybe let's just get everybody together in a meeting or just give everybody like a 15 minute 10 or 15 minute window and just say hey feedback and by having like moments like that where you're bringing everyone together like earlier on in the early stages of what you're working on it also reduces the amount of friction down the road you know you're not caught as you're not running into as many surprises later on because you've gotten that feedback early you've gotten unique perspectives early so yeah i really like um uh, <laughs> that uh, it was actually set up with the um posing the questions of what you're sharing as the, as the designer. Um, so in, in my job, I, I present, I do present early to the development team, but um, it can sometimes be, be more like, Hey, here's me walking through a design and give me your feedback after. Whereas this is like, it prompts what feedback you're looking for uh, and allows people that you're asking to actually go through at their own pace and um, uh, really focus in on it on the um, on the experience and experience it for themselves instead of having it like spelt out for them if they really come in fresh and they actually like are going through it like an end user would yeah that, that's a good point Avery one of the one of the things that we discussed before putting this board together was do we connect everything with arrows so you could see it we're like well maybe we don't need it for this because if you're blind and you don't and uh, blind to the approach or the product, you you may not understand what to do next, and that's probably a good thing, right? We want to know. If they don't know what to do. But if I do as the crit critiquer, then I, I might have missed something by by walking you through it. So yeah, that was. Oh, sorry, go ahead. 
uh, one, one other thing I wanted to add about the process. Um, I, I first experienced this kind of process in a physical space, not a digital space. So we adapted it um, based on the same kind of phrasing and those kind of things. But we did it with dots and um, sticky notes. So you put your initials and one on a dot, and then you put your initials and one on a sticky note, and you put your real quick comment on there, and then you stuck the dot on the part of the UI that was hanging up on a physical wall, and then mm -hmm. um, everybody read them out loud. And, and then what would usually happen when you read them out loud, you could say plus one, and then they would just, everyone would uh, converge on their sticky, sticky notes together, and they would all be kind of bundled together. So this can be done in a physical space too. Obviously, with where we're at right now, um, doing it digitally um, is uh, really the the most optimal way, but um, you can do it in a physical space too if you happen to be around a group of people. That's kind of a nice experience as well. Yes, yeah, so I, I think I just I wanted right, a plus right. one earlier, like the the approach to not necessarily putting the uh, instructions, the instructional flow in the in the uh, sequence. Uh, normally. In, in my past, I have worked on doing interactive comps and wireframes where it can be, if you don't know what you're coming into, it can be hard or rather easy to lose track of where you're at in the space and it provide almost too many opportunities to link out and come back. Um, putting them all in one spot and just letting people sort of just digest it seems to to me, at least from a from a from a critique standpoint, it seems to allow for a, a more holistic, like higher level look at it. Yeah, and the phrasing that, like uh, I mentioned earlier, like that's something I love. Uh, the you know, I like, I wish, what if, did you think of, did you try, whatever. Like all of those types of framings, they don't just exist in a way that discourages confrontation. That's not even, in my opinion, that's not even really what it's about. They exist more in a way that frames it so you're not just getting feedback that's, I don't like this. Because it, it forces that person who's giving the feedback to say what they don't like about it or what they wish was different about it. Or like, so it really sort of, as somebody giving feedback, it forces your mind to actually think through what is it that you wish was different? What is it that you hope to see? Um, so, I mean, if there's one thing that y'all kind of take out of this, in my opinion, uh, taking those prompts and bringing those into your next uh, kind of feedback session would be my suggestion. I, I have found that those prompts uh, have become part of my way of having conversations <laughs> with folks. So yeah. it just becomes a, a natural way of, um, of sharing with people and um, becomes a, a, a lot, you know, I, I do find myself doing it uh, more than usual, I think. Yeah, and we can post those on Meetup and in the Orlando Designer Slack group. Um, and maybe, I guess with that, it might be a, I don't know if uh, it's a good time to transition it to community announcements and all that. Yeah, let me uh, pull up the last slides here. Just one second. Hi, real fast. This is uh, Elizabeth Wilson. Um, I work for uh, I work for NASA, and I uh, help design the um, the displays that go into the uh, launch control rooms. And um, this would be a great tool for us to use, uh, you know, in our in a, in a lot of our design reviews. Uh, but how do you how do you get them uh, not to, you know, not to propose solutions? Because you know that's I mean that's what these operators do. You know, they 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 see a problem and they find a solution. So um, how do you how do you get them to you know not provide um, those solutions at this point? Leah, you want to go first, or I can jump in? Oh, uh, can you jump in? I was responding to a question in the chat. Yeah, yeah. so uh, what, I, what I found is uh, a lot of times whenever they go into these experiences and they start seeing the type of feedback that happens and you do introduce those positive ways of um, providing information, uh, that helps. Also, time boxing this. So keeping it really, really short 
um, one of the things that you'll find as you do it, I know that, um, and we kind of kept it going, but a lot of times um, whenever you're reading them, we probably should have said at the beginning, oh, by the way, if you have more thoughts around what you wrote, the, you can reach out to the designer afterwards and also the designer will reach out to you if they have any questions if something's not clear um, what that does that time box it only gives you so much time right so if you want to get across all of these screens you're probably not spending a lot of time solutioning on one little thing and um, that that has been the case typically um, occasionally you'll see some that happen in there and where where I've seen it, it's gonna happen it, in the critique but then post critique you say hey everybody did amazing uh let's just remember the next time we come to the table that it's really not about the solutions it's about trying to um share what your perspective might be on the thing that you're seeing there and that that a lot of times the next time because if you're the person that did it and i remember the first one i did i was i was like all over the place solving the, how this product should work and then I was like, wait a minute, that was me. I was that person that was um, coming up with solutions just because I hadn't done the exercise before. Um, and we did find that when stakeholders and stuff come to the come to it, the first time they see it, they're kind of like, I'm just going to watch and see what this is. After you've seen it, you really start to get it. And maybe if you do like a, a test one on something that isn't related to, you know, like launching the rocket, but you do it on like, you know, how to, how to fill a big gulp, you know, or anything like that. And I think maybe it might be just good if when they're introducing the, the rule that, hey, we're not being solution oriented, um, that there would be some examples, like instead of saying this, this is how we're going, like maybe this would be a better example. So just, just giving them a, a, B, like don't do this, but do this, this is the way. Yeah. And that is why Leah and I did the um, example at, at the beginning. So everyone would kind of get a sense for how feedback is provided. And um, that has succeeded. You know, Jeff has participated in a lot of these too. And Jeff, I know you're not a part of this, but do you have any thoughts around that too? Um, I would just echo a lot of things you already said. Um, definitely, I think the examples, uh, like someone else mentioned um, in the beginning as well, like hey, we're just, you know, trying not to solution and also giving that example of, um, you know, rather than saying this one thing, frames it in a different way to kind of get somebody to uh, change how they're thinking about something rather than just straight out give an answer to it, right? So just get them thinking, kind of uh, framing your uh, comments more around uh, things that are thought provoking. Yeah, I, I hope that was helpful. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so um, in conclusion, involve others, bring everybody in, let everybody participate, help them understand what they're getting into, um, let them know that they can just observe too. Um, we have had a lot of people participate where they did not add any comments and they were just observers. It's probably good for the designer to not participate, but just facilitate. Um, and then, um, you know, time box yourself, put it put um, some constraints on it so that you don't spend a lot of time. The whole idea around these is to try to really get it done in, you know, five minutes maybe. Um, I know that sounds really rapid. It is, but we, we typically try to keep them under five minutes. Um, we've gone for three minutes. I think we did one, the shortest one we did was like a minute and a half um, and just kind of real quick went through things. Um, but keep it simple. Um, and even on your, when you're doing the critique, Keep your comments simple. I think you can um, really get a lot out rapidly and it gives you an opportunity to um, look across the whole um, product that you're trying to review. And you know, most of all, you know, stay positive and um, just give it a try. Um, trying this out is uh, the best way to really experience it and you, your team is really gonna resonate with it, I think. And play some music. Play some music, yeah. All right.